right, so welcome to week 37, uh, I guess technically week 36, and I will explain that right now. Um, as many of you guys know, I wanted a different topic to do my C-section. Uh, I wrote a letter to the board explaining why it was denied, um, which I was okay with. Uh, she was still, uh, she's working in the, the hospital that day instead of down at the other office, so she'll just gonna pop in and come to see me, which I'm okay with. Um, so anyways, so the board wanted to double check to just see that it was, that I had somebody else scheduled, but it also has a gestational age. I will be two days shy of 40 weeks. With a repeat C-section, they don't really like you getting past 39 weeks. Um, they might let you go to like 39 weeks of one day, two days, but not really close to 40 weeks because of the risk of a uterine rupture, especially after two C-sections. My high-risk doctor, um, is the one who told me last Monday about it, he said, we changed your due date. And I, was, I started to panic. He said, or we'd have to change your C-section date. He's like, we figured it's easier to change your C-section date I mean your uh, due date because they just went to my LMP. <laughs> so we're back to originally where I was, you know, due at the end of August. August, uh, I think, was it 30th or 31st? So yeah, somewhere around there is when I'm due. So it looks like on paper that I'm having the baby at 39 weeks instead of looking like I am, you know, what I should be. Uh, but he said not to, you know, not to worry or anything like that. All they did it was so that way they didn't have to move my C-section date. And, you know, because they understood uh, why it was so important to me to have the baby that close to my due date. Uh, because I, I do, I'm one of those that believes that, you know, you know, I don't like picking the baby's birthday, even though we did. Um, but I, you know... I'm giving her the, the latest that she can possibly pick. If I go into labor early, there's nothing I can do about it. We've obviously, we've done stuff about it because she was trying to come earlier, but now at this point, you know, she comes now, it's not a big deal. Um, the only problem was with this past week, if I went into labor and actually delivered, we would have had issues. Um, but we... We did have some contractions, but I'll get all into that in the update, but I just want to let you guys know, even though that doesn't matter, I'm going to still keep it as 37 weeks, but just so that way, sharing everything with you guys. It's been, I don't want to say a dull week, but it's been kind of a quiet week um, in terms of stuff that was planned. We did have a little bit of excitement where we thought she could be coming and no. Uh, but they did check me again because they did, you know, I kind of went, you know, MIA on Facebook and it, I just wanted to wait until we knew all the information because uh, they sent me home because I w didn't progress anymore in a like three hour period so they said we'll send you home. You know, you don't live far from the hospital so it wasn't a big deal. Um, and then they checked me again on Friday because they said, you know, also the, the rules were I had to, you know, keep track of my contractions if they started to get really, really bad and I had a lot of them in an hour. Because, um, like, as you guys all know, I've had contractions, you know, for what, 12, 13 weeks now, or it's been going on. Um, and because I've been asked, am I confusing them with Brex and Hicks contractions? No, they are real contractions. They're just, they're very irregular. Uh, sometimes they do kind of like start to form a pattern and get closer together. Um, but typically they range in their times. Um, but these ones are very intense and things like that that I was having when I originally went in. But anyways, it's back to what I was saying, that I, if I had a lot of them in an hour, I was to head back and they would check to see if there's any cervical change. Uh, so on Friday they checked my cervix. I am a I am two centimeters dilated, so it means um, my hospital policy. Now every hospital is different. The second I hit three, they're going to do a C-section. 
um, meaning I get checked tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Um, Monday and Friday. That's right. Because <laughs> they didn't want to check me too often. Because as some of you guys know, sometimes being checked um, can actually start things up. That's why they don't. Um, when you're in preterm labor, they don't really like to check you too much. Um, and like constantly, re uh, you know, constantly checking you. So I was at a two on Friday. So we have been advised to kind of keep an eye on my contractions. If they start getting regular and they're about an hour apart, go. Um, like they said, they would rather have a whole bunch of false alarms than to have a problem, uh, especially with the anemia. That, I guess, is their biggest concern, is the anemia because of the fact that even taking the iron hasn't helped, so, um, but I've been having the bleeding ever since, and it's just not getting better, and, um, yes, I have been taking the iron that I did the review on, um, that it's not, it, it's just my body right now. Nothing seems to be helping with my anemia, um, but at least when I take that, I'm not. It's not so. I'm not so drained anymore. So. Not really. Um, not in terms of the pregnancy. Uh, really, what we have coming up, it, um, my husband and I do need to sit down and talk and try to figure out some stuff because we, you know. We've had a lot of stuff going on, so, you know, it is very hard having a, a high-risk pregnancy after you've had two, you know, somewhat normal, my son was completely normal, my daughter, we did have preterm labor, but, like, we stopped it, and that was it. <laughs> Not like this, where we've stopped it, and then there's, you know, this, and then there's that, and it, it's just, it's been a very rough pregnancy on everybody, so, um... We're trying not to make too many, you know, rash decisions, especially while I'm just a little hormonal. So, nothing really coming up, but yeah, it's our, it would be our seven year anniversary on, what, next Monday, so, yeah. I'm exhausted. Like, I'm now finding myself, which now we finally noticed there's a pattern in it, so hopefully my, we can all get on board on what I need, because uh, I'm still working, and I know before everyone goes, oh my gosh, you're still working, and yes, I'm still working, my doctor has already said, the second I call and say, I am done, he will fax the note over, uh, all he has to do is, uh, sign it and put a date on it. That's all he has to do. He has it already written up for me. So that way I can just be done. Cause he's like, you, you really, he's like, you're pushing your luck going to work every day. Um, but when I come home from work, I am wiped. But the, even this weekend I found that like the time I normally get home, like three o'clock to five o'clock, I am very exhausted. But if I take a nap, it's not so bad. So, that's something, I don't want to say something new, but something also, oh, because I'm also <laughs> not aligned, um, she's dropped, but instead of like most normal babies that stay like all curled up in a little ball, she decided to extend herself, uh, which is funny to watch in the ultrasound, because she's got her little feet up in my um, lungs, so she's pushing up. And then, of course, then her head's on my bladder, so, um, yeah, I, I really thought that, you know, there's only that they stay up high or they drop. <laughs> there is a third option, apparently. Um, my son dropped early, so I never understood why everyone complained about the third trimester. I just, you know, I was peeing a lot. Not during the night, just kind of like during the day I would pee a lot, so it wasn't a big deal. So I was always, oh my gosh, why is everyone complaining about the third trimester? And then with Tiny, oh my god gosh, she was so up high, and I couldn't breathe, and I'm like, oh my gosh, but I wasn't peeing all day long, 
Um, so it was kind of weird. And then this time I'm like, oh, she, you know, she dropped. And I'm like, but I still can't breathe. <laughs> so there's a third option. So before you go, there's only two options. There's three that <laughs> they can stretch out. So, yeah, I'm still out of breath and I'm peeing and like I'm waking up during the night and I have to pee. So I pee. Um, which, since the beginning of the pregnancy, I've always like, you know, if you lean forward, you can get out all the pee. I lean forward, that doesn't help. I stand up, and then I sit right back down because then I have to pee because it makes her move. Um, but then sometimes I hop back into bed and I have to get back up and go pee. It's. <sighs> Some nights I just lay there and go, you know what? No, I'm going back to sleep. So. Um, pregnancy brain, I'm like forgetting things constantly, um, where I'm even forgetting it at work, which is like, I hate doing it at work because when you work with a whole group of guys, they're like, whoa, you can't even remember anything, it's probably just going to remember the name. <laughs> yeah. I work with all guys. kind of sucks. So... Yeah, pregnancy brain. That's about it for symptoms. Well, reminders for pregnancy. Um, I I'm kind of at that point too of if she comes now, I'm okay with it. If she decides to stay put longer, I'm okay with it. I'm just I'm done. I'm done with the pregnancy. But I'm okay with it going longer. Um, you know, I'm okay with going, you know, another, like, two weeks and five days, I think. I'm fine with that. I'm also fine if she decides to come in the next ten minutes. Hopefully not. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I am having some contractions, but not a lot. So, well, you know, no more than normal. That is it, um, and I hope you guys are enjoying the VEDA videos. I'm going to try to record a couple of them right now because it is impossible with sleep and... Uh, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.